Welcome to a new edition of the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino. On this episode, we talk with serial entrepreneur Evan the Biz. He is a serial entrepreneur who promotes productive biz motivation through his unconventional strategies and successes. Evan created a million-dollar business during the heart of the COVID-19 pandemic when most businesses were tanking. He used that success to immediately give back the charity, all the while scaling a startup. He has used his tact and wit to successfully tap into the inner circles of celebrities and large-scale companies. We get into so much in this interview. Enjoy. Well, hey, thank you for taking a minute out today. I appreciate it. No problem. So before we get into your life and business, which is a fascinating one, I'm curious how you survived this COVID period. How did you get through it? How did it change the way that you approach life and the way that you conduct business now? I mean, uh, well, to be honest, my businesses, uh, several businesses, kind of went offline when COVID hit. And, you know, and I have employees that, and they obviously have families. So I felt responsible to come up with a way to survive in business uh, for myself and, you know, for everybody that works with me. So I actually developed uh, a COVID business in itself uh, to, to survive. Talk to me a little bit about, so to get exactly what you do for a living, I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day, and one of the kids is going to look up at you and say, what do you do for a living? How would you explain that to them? Uh, the, the easiest way is um, the third grader is uh, I figure out what, what, um, what the world needs, and I come up with a way to, uh, to fill that boy, to give them what they need. I guess that's a simple way to say I'm a serial entrepreneur. Let's take you back to the third grade. What was your dream to be when you grew up? Um, I never dreamed to be actually anything. Um, I just, I just always felt confident that I would kind of manifest anything I wanted, which is what I've been doing since kindergarten. You know, if I needed something, uh, came from a pretty broke family, so I went out, figured out how to make a few bucks. And I went and got what I needed. So I never felt um, like I had any limits in life. I just kind of experimented with, you know, anything I wanted to do, whether it be sports or um, go to places I wanted to go. I, I just never felt limited because I, I, I always felt I could do something about it or be resourceful. If I didn't have the money, I'd figure a way out. If I needed money, I figured out a way to make money. So as a highly driven and motivated businessman, all of this began somewhere. Take me back to your childhood, where you were born and raised, and how these seeds were planted in you that grew into who you are and your, your desire and your success as a businessman. Um, I would say what's crazy is uh, I think my initial drive was because I was literally hungry. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. I, I was a... I was a I was a good eater uh, and, a, and a big eater as a kid, and I felt I felt like I wasn't eating enough. And um, I saw other kids like you know getting some big lunches. Uh, you know, I grew grew up in the you know I would say the inner city of New York, uh, Brooklyn and Queens area, and um, I was a chubby kid, and I needed uh, food to satisfy my my hunger, and I felt like. It just wasn't enough, so I went out and I hustled at the grocery mark at the grocery store. I'd, I'd help, um, I target elderly people that seem to need help, and carry their groceries uh, to their car. And um, I kind of did it to help them. It wasn't just for money. And then uh, when they started to give me tips, I realized that wow, I'm helping somebody uh, that needs the help, and I'm making some money. And then I had options. Uh, I could choose to to buy my own lunch wherever I wanted uh, on my school break. I was able to get ice cream on top of it, and I was able to pay for all my friends. So I, I felt like um, I was never, you know, my mom never had money, so I never even thought to ask her for it. And I felt like um, I was able to kind of manifest whatever I wanted. Uh, I just got creative. And um, I even scaled that little business 
and had my friends doing it. Uh, and then figured out I was getting, I was cutting into my own profits. <laughs> so I figured out how to, how to make it a part of my, my business so I can, um, so they would be helping me <laughs> instead of going on their own and, and making money. So I figured that out pretty quick. You know, the interesting thing about your drive and motivation and what comes through in your bio is it seems like a cornerstone of what you do is giving back. And and that's a part, just even with what you explained, your start. Is is that really kind of a part of your mission is to make sure that you give back to those that, that need it? It really is. I mean, it's always been my, my kind of my purpose is to kind of help people that really couldn't couldn't figure things out. You know, they were good people. They just didn't know how to and I always felt I had a gift for it. So it always felt natural to kind of share, you know, whatever spoils I got, I felt the need that, you know, why why couldn't they get it? You know, I like I like these people too. They're good people. Why can't they have what I have? So I always felt like I wanted to share whatever I made and, and that kind of continued through life. I always, I always, uh, kind of hired my friends, uh, in all of my businesses, uh, because I felt it was helping them. If I'm going to help someone, I might as well help a friend. And, um, it is a part of my motivation. And then I realized creating jobs was fulfilling. Uh, and then I saw the results of people upgrading their lives and it was because I created that job for them. And supply the business. So, yeah, it's, it's been a tremendous part of my drive is being able to help other people. I just would feel bad if I'm the only one that's that's rising up and uh, other people aren't, you know? Absolutely. So when you look at your career as a serial entrepreneur, you know, you, there's been a lot of things that have been part of this. You have a patent on an iPhone accessory. You built a full-service commercial film facility. Many, many other things as well. I'm curious... What was it? What was the first thing that you came up with that was successful where you really felt like you arrived, that you had, you had done what you dreamed about doing and you could build from there and go up? I guess it was when I just first started um, flipping things. Uh, it started with flipping a, a used car. You know, I'd go, to the, I'd go to the auction, pick up a car for, you know, 500 I'd fix it for 300 and then I'd flip it for like 2300 and, you know, and kind of double my money uh, generally. So that was, I felt like, you know, I had the knack to, to find a deal somewhere and then package it uh, differently than the way I bought it, which would be, in, you know, fixing it up, detailing it, uh, tinting the windows. Um, so once I, you know, I started flipping cars, and then I started just flipping anything I can get my hands on uh, for a good deal that I knew other people would pay more for. So I had a knack for knowing what people would want and what they pay for something and had a knack for going out and seeking out good deals. And then obviously I turned, you know, flipping cars. I flipped some sandals. I got, you know, this big lot of sandals one time. Um, I got gloves. And then obviously you increase your flips and it went to, to real estate, you know. So I just generally, um, I work my way up from what I can afford and purchase things I can afford and flip it and keep flipping bigger and bigger, you know. And um, that's where it all, you know, just having that knack was enough. And, and once you have that, you could do anything. And another part of having drive is having good people that you look up to. Who's been a role model or a hero for you in your life? I honestly never had anyone that I knew uh, to, to really look up to. Unfortunately, you know, uh, it would have, I mean, it, 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 I don't regret it in a way because it, it made me rely on myself. Um, it also allowed me to make a lot of mistakes, which uh, when you make a lot of mistakes and you figure it out, you actually figure out how to succeed at a lot of things, too. So I don't, you know, I, I can't say I had any uh, role models. I actually had the opposite. I had people I saw doing the wrong thing, and I was able to kind of use that as a model not to do. <laughs> so that yeah. kind of worked out for me. I get it, for sure. 
Is there anybody alive on the planet right now that you would love to meet and talk to? That's interesting. I, I, not really, I've never really, like I said, I never had anyone to go to. So I never uh, really seeked out any help. And there are some amazing things in life that have happened. And I never really um, paid attention to who was behind it until recently. Um, and I've been kind of reaching out to different people that were behind some of, of, of the biggest innovations, I would say, in different uh, genres. Like, for instance, I was uh, really curious who was behind the innovation of um, MTV. And I can't even tell you his name right now because I don't even know it. But he was the founder of MTV, and then he went on to create, uh, what is it, iHeart Media. So this this guy, which I wish I remembered his name right now, he hears this uh, at some point, it probably... Uh, second guess me, but huh. so I, uh, you know, so I figured I figured out a way to reach him, and um, I'll be, you know, speaking to him soon. So, so yeah, I, I just I'm on a, I guess I'm on a little side mission. It's my very last priority is to, is actually to meet people behind some of the the interesting innovations uh, that happen, I guess, in my lifetime. You know. So I have some of the founders here in front of me: Robert Pittman, Les Garland. Tom Freeston and John Sykes. John Sykes, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, th yeah that, I'll be that speaking is... to him. Um, yeah. I'm going to be speaking to um, John, uh, Damon John from the Shark Tank. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have him on my podcast. I'm going to have uh, Marcus Limonis uh, because he's just, uh, he's a guy that I could really, you know, respect because I've seen him do a lot of good in many different ways. Uh, so, I, so I'm so i definitely uh, I'm bringing him on my podcast. And then I have people, you know, I've, I've, I've had, you know, I've been fortunate to speak to George Lopez, who was a pioneer uh, as a Latino and uh, breaking ground in, you know, in, in Hollywood in many different ways. And um, uh I was blessed to also speak to uh, Billy Porter, who, you know, not only is he African-American, but he's gay, and he's made some really big strides in uh, in the industry, showbiz, with with a whole lot of weight and, and a whole lot of hurdles to, to, to tackle. Uh, so these are the people that I can, you know, respect, and not only, uh, you know, they they tackle some really big, hurdles and they also you know they also give back too so uh, that's important you know absolutely you know every day you wake up you have things that you want to do with the things that motivate you what is it that motivates you through a day what is it that really drives you to be successful and to be who you are so that's a that's a good question because when i wake up that's what makes me i think different and wired different and my brain must be wired a little different because I almost reset my whole day and I look forward to, to waking up. I don't think about any problems or anything that might be normally stressful to the average person. I really just wake up and think about how I can make a difference that day. So I'm, I'm always anxious and I'm excited and I look forward to what this day brings and, uh, you know, what maybe I, I don't know, I bring into the day that I've been working on for several weeks or I just say, you know what, today I want to do this. I, I just want to do something different because it's important to me today and I'll try to uh, set up a plan and, and start tackling. I, I, you know, I don't spend a lot of time planning. I just do. And uh, that can get you into trouble sometimes financially but it's a good feeling. It's it's a full feeling of uh, freedom, you know. So let's go to the end of the day. How do you quantify a good day? When you look back, you sit back in the easy chair. How do you look at that day and say that was a good one? I, I guess it's more like how I feel, right? So towards I guess the end of the day, 
I feel uh, it's more of an energy. I feel some kind of way, uh, an accomplishment. I don't even attribute it to one thing. It's just like, you know what, today I feel good. I, I, I feel like I did some, some, some things to help some ongoing projects. I did some things to start some new projects. Maybe I put out some fires that have generally been harder to put out. Uh, maybe there's some new opportunities that come on the horizon. Um, so it's really how you feel. If at the end of the day, I feel like, you know what, I just spun my wheels, uh, then I wouldn't feel too good. I would feel like, you know what, I wasted a day. and It's kind of a blessing. Each day we have is a blessing, and, you know, you got to make use of it. And if, if, if I felt uh, I didn't, I probably wouldn't feel so good, but I don't know. Every day, I kind of feel good. At the end of the day, I, I'm I'm really not disappointed. What's been one of the best letters or responses you've either gotten from a client or an employee of yours? I mean, I can't tell you one specifically, but a response where I've impacted somebody's life. It doesn't have to be in a tremendous way, but in a way that they they really appreciate it. And it kind of put them on a different course, either in mindset or just literally on a different course. Um, and that's always a great feeling if something I said or did can impact somebody in a positive way. That's enough. That's really enough for me. So everyone out there has a perception of you, your family, your friends, clients, employees, everyone. But ultimately, you live your life. You have a perception of who you are. Who do you think you are? I just think I'm, I'm a person that lives without feeling limited. Um, and in reality, maybe there are limits, but I don't feel like there are. And I'm not talking in a legal fashion or, or you know, doing things that you're not supposed to do. I mean, just limits to, you know, if, um, I don't know, Jerry Seinfeld is, is playing out here. Uh, I think tonight I got an alert on the phone and it's like no tickets. He sold out. But I'm going to find a way to see him because it would be cool to see Jerry Seinfeld, you know. And I don't let, a, you know, something, you know, most people would look at it and say, oh, it's sold out. There's no way you can get tickets. I'll figure out a way. I'll make, you know, 100 calls. I'll make sure I, I, I get the best seats in the house. And I'll see it. Um, so I don't know. It's just being it's just being able to live limitless, and it's not because I'm this, you know, this rich guy that has infinite amount of money. It's not that at all. It's just that I'm willing to put in the work to get whatever I want, and I'm not afraid of the hard work, and I'm not afraid of the unknown, uh, and I'm. Definitely not afraid to do things differently. I don't follow any business model. I just go with my instincts. And more times than less, I'm, I'm usually my, my instincts and my intuition have brought me to succeeding at whatever I want. So I don't know what that's called. I don't know what word it is, but I'm just always manifesting my, my own destiny on a, on a daily basis. So, Evan, if anybody wants to learn more about you, your businesses, what you do, who you are, where is the best place on the web for them to go? Um, mindyourbiz.biz, and that's simply mind, M-I-N-D, your, Y-O-U-R, biz, B-I-Z, dot biz. And, and that just kind of gets you into my, into my bubble, in my world, and, um, you know, it'll get you to whatever social media is and, and other things I'm, I'm working on, so that's the best way. Evan, hey, thank you for letting me and the listeners get into your bubble for a little bit. I really appreciate it. Have a, uh, have a great year, man, and good luck with everything. I appreciate it. Thank you much. Appreciate you, too. Thanks for tuning in to another famous interview with Joe Domino. We'll cover the world of art, literature, business, spirituality, music, and more from around the globe. If you want to hear more interviews, visit the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino channel on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and until next time. Mm-hmm.